Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, the regularly scheduled board meeting for the Azusa Unified School District Board of Education on March 1st, 2022. Uh, do apologize, coming back from closed session a little late, and so we are, are opening our open session meeting at 7.03 p.m., and we will begin with our flag salute. Let's stand. We'll move to item 4.2, which is roll call. Board member Arianes? Present. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? Here. Board member Bo? Here. Board member Rodriguez Pena? Present. And I, board member Greer, am also here. Which moves us to item 4.3, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion, motion to, approve. to approve. Moved by board member Arianes? Second. Second by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Hearing none, let's move to a vote. We'll go ahead and take a hand vote. Uh, Board Member Arianes? Yes. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. Board Member Bo? Yes. Board member Rodriguez Pena. Yes. And I, board member Greer, am also yes. And so the motion passes five to zero. Board member audience, are you able to join in? Is it letting you? Let me look. Log out, log in. Okay. Cool. All right. So that moves us to item 5.0 re report action of closed session items. And 5.1 approval of resolution 21 22 20 release or reassignment of an administrator. Number 21 22 Is there a motion on the floor? Motion, motion to approve, approve 5.1. Second. Moved by Board Member Rodriguez Pena. Second by Board Member Arianes. Any discussion? Then we'll move to a vote. And the motion passes three to two. Moving on to item 5.2, approval of resolution 21-22-21, release from employment of Temporary Certificated Employee. Motion, Motion to approve 5.2. Moved by Board Member Arianes. Second. Second by Board Member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Then we will move to a vote. And the motion passes five to zero. Moving to item 5.3, approval of a resolution 21-22-22, reduction or discontinuance of particular kinds of services. Is there a motion on the floor? Make a motion to approve 5.3. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena, second by board member Arianes. Any discussion? Then we move to a vote. And the motion passes five to zero. Moving on then to item 6.0, items from the floor, public comment on agenda or non-agenda items, and specifically 6.1, public comment on agenda or non-agenda items. This is an opportunity for the public to address the Board of Education on agenda or non-agenda items. Individual speakers may be allowed up to three minutes to address the Board of Education on any agenda or non-agenda items. When the public wishes to address the board on an agenda item, they may fill out a blue card, stand at the podium, or raise their hand while in Zoom attendance. The board will take blue card requests first, followed in order by speakers at the podium, 
and then those in Zoom attended. And again, I do want to remind everyone that there to please keep your eye on the three minute marker, uh, because if you surpass the three minutes, I will need to stop you um, to, to allow for uh, equity for all of our speakers to have no more than three minutes. So if you keep an eye on that timer and stop, then I don't have to stop you. And I apologize in advance if, if, if I'm needing to interrupt you. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and begin with Rebecca Lopez. I have some, I don't know if you'll get them now or later. A visual aid. If it's Good evening, school board members and district staff. Opinions don't affect facts, but facts should affect opinions. So here tonight, I remind us of the facts. These have all been shared at the district website and with the school board members. I share these facts and ask you to listen, reflect, and then reconsider. It is within your power, and you can still make a motion to amend your previous vote regarding the elementary school closures in the district. As a representative of our entire city, your constituents are requesting your attention. We are voicing our concerns. Facts should affect opinions. Facts should affect your vote. Here are the facts. Dalton and Lee Elementary Schools are 0.8 miles apart. They're both within the new trustee area four. This new voting area currently has a board member living there. Both Dalton and Lee Elementary Schools are being scheduled to remain open. Now let's look at Magnolia and Powell Elementary Schools. They are 0 0.9 miles apart. They are both in the new trustee area three. This new voting area currently does not have a voting member living there. Both Magnolia and Powell Elementary Schools are scheduled to close. This area also just closed Gladstone Elementary two years ago. According to the approved trustee scenario map, the population difference in these areas for zero ages zero to 17 years old is only 1.7%. That's the variance between the two districts. While the population density is a valid concern, this data shows that essentially the same amount of students need access to schools. Yet one area has two schools and the other area has none. If these elementary schools closures in the Southeast side of Azusa don't change, there will be a major traffic jam to the West. Magnolia students will go to the closest school at Murray, bringing the capacity to 99% full. Powell students can't go to Magnolia, so we'll look to Lee, which would bring that capacity to 100%. This would leave a lopsided influx of students, assuming that they don't just try to leave the district altogether. And if families look to the east for other school options, this will continue to bring down the Azusa School District enrollment number. This could cause additional school closures. And then what? Close Lee then? After spending millions to improve it, widening the geographic gap of available schools to the entire east side of Azusa, board members, I urge you to reconsider and make a motion to revote. Save the schools that are keeping Azusa relevant in the region. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Next, we have Jesus Carrillo. Good evening, board members, board president. Um, gonna come to you. Um, you guys know all the facts. Uh, they're, they're posted everywhere. Everyone keeps talking about facts. Um, I, don't, I don't think your decisions are based on facts. So I'm gonna come to you as a parent and as a member of the community. Um, as of the last two weeks, we voiced our concerns as a community. We've spoken to several uh, community members, parents, teachers, not only of Magnolia, but of the other schools that we will be transferring to. No one really knew, which leads me to believe that I don't think enough is being done to notify, right? When your terms are up, they're everywhere, right? signs everywhere, vote for me, I'm up, I'm doing this, I can do this, I can do that. When impactful decisions 
about closing schools for the rest of of your child's basically you know education are being done i think more needs to be done to make communities aware that's one another one is um i've reached out to every single one of you board members um thank you president greer for getting back to us man of your word you spoke to us you let us present you with our opinions facts very candid very open discussion superintendent ortega thank you very much another you you met with me met with several other um parents um board member rodriguez pena thank you very much for your call that that's the type of i guess board members we would like to continue to have um for the ones i did not mention i sent numerous emails haven't gone back i know you've reached out to other families um but i think if if you say hey reach out to me and there's three emails i would expect uh you know some level of response so with that being said the magnolia community did a walk and talk which i think every board member was invited to we had a great uh showing of families and we had our little ones as well as our parents and caretakers walk with us that video will be posted online for everyone to see i will be sending you the unedited version that's an hour and 15 minutes long so you can see the type of environment we're going to have to walk through because that was the main focus was the walking community and that's what we're showing thank you thank you mr Carrillo. next we have christian for you good evening board members first and foremost thank you president greer for meeting with me and a few other parents you were as transparent as could be with some difficult conversations that we had. I hope you thought about what and who we represent to a school district. President Greer, when we spoke, you talked about various layers, such as district capacity levels, allocated funds, school distances, and dense populations when making the closure decision. However, if you look at these data points, nothing really moves the needle enough to justify closing Magnolia. You also made it clear you were speaking up for the Lee community since you felt that they are the disenfranchised, as you called it, in the past years. I'm having a hard time understand what the real goal is with the recent closure. Is it your tie to the Lee community? Help us understand the real reason we are losing all elementaries on the east side. Let me make one thing clear. I have no ill intentions to Lee or Dalton community. I appreciate a walking community. However, I'm struggling with the fact that both communities now have dedicated schools less than a mile from one another, but the new trustee area won't even have one. We each have roles in this community relationship as parents and bo as board members. We both have expectations of one another and from my point of view are not that hard to understand. You as elected members are expected to be unbiased and responsible decision makers for the whole community. In return, you ask us to raise responsible children, children that understand the importance of education, and most importantly, you expect parents to be involved in our children's education. Well, this is what it looks like. We are fighting to give our children a fair chance of an education that is defined as an impartial and honest chance. We are showing them what fair really looks like. Now, will you? President Greer, speak up for all communities that are disenfranchised and unrepresented, not only the ones that you have ties to. Board member Cruz Gonzalez, before the vote was final, you made mention that brand new board district would be left without a school and then silence in the room. You even followed up with, maybe that doesn't matter. Your vote wasn't enough and you knew that. Board member Bo, it's very clear that you care more about charter schools and the Rosedale community than what's truly right to the Azusa district. Board member Rodriguez Pena, I appreciate your vote, but I would have expected a bit more discussion knowing this motion was an afterthought. Board member Gabriela, you stated regardless of where a board member lives or the district that they live in, you service all the elementaries. Well, it's time to walk the walk. You, show, you should all be ashamed of yourselves for letting this take place. Whether it's personal agendas or loyalty to a sole community, the decision to keep Lee and Dalton open was not just. Closing Magnolia was a quick win for some of you. President Greer, you mentioned that there have been mistakes in the past that the board has made. Well, this is one of them, but it's not too late. Open the conversation again. We are asking you to re-vote and represent all Azusa communities. Thank you for your time. 
to Ms. Carrillo. Next up, we have Daisy Cervantes. Hello. Hello, good evening, AUSD board, parents, and staff. My name is Daisy Cervantes Barron, and I have been a student at Magnolia Elementary School for eight years. My eight remarkable years at Magnolia have been amazing because of what I have learned and what I have accomplished with the help of all my teachers. The teachers at Magnolia are amazing, and I would like to thank all the teachers I have had and Ms. Wright, my current teacher, because they have all wanted me to do my best. I really like Magnolia and the staff here because they try to help us as much as they can when we don't understand something. I also really appreciate the book we have read, like Esperanza Rising, because it was surprising that we were reading a book that I had something in common with since it had sentences in Spanish and place in Mexico. I wasn't born in Mexico, but Spanish was my first language since I speak it at home every day. I want to thank Dr. Mitchell for providing us with these books that people in our class could really connect with. You should reconsider your decision on closing Magnolia because it would be a waste of money since they just remodeled it and they added advanced technology in the classroom. They had just remodeled the basketball courts, the playground, and the fences. In the classroom, they added built-in speakers that are attached to the ceiling, which allows us to hear our teachers better when they use the microphone that they were provided with. In the classrooms, they improved the whiteboards by putting in new advanced projectors with a smart screen and pen. I have seen the other elementary schools and Magnolia is one of the most modern schools I've seen. Yo también pienso que deben reconsiderar su decisión de cerrar Magnolia porque yo tengo amigos que sus papás no manejan o no tienen tiempo porque trabajan. Los estudiantes tendrían que caminar todos los días más lejos a una escuela que no está cerca a su casa y eso sería muy difícil. Si ustedes piensan en cerrar Magnolia, no va a haber ninguna escuela primaria en el lado oeste. Otra razón por la que deben de mantener Magnolia abierta es porque Magnolia es como mi segunda casa para mí. Mitad de mi día estoy en la escuela con mis maestros y mis amigos. También he logrado otras cosas que nunca pensé que hubiera podido lograr. I think you guys should also reconsider your decision because I have some friends whose parents don't drive or don't have time to take them to school because they work. The students would have to walk every day farther to a school that isn't close to their home and that would be hard for them. If you guys close down Magnolia, there will be no more elementary schools on the east side. I also think you guys should reconsider your decision on closing down Magnolia since it's like my second home to me, since half my day is spent at Magnolia with my teachers and my friends. I also accomplished other stuff that I never thought I would accomplish there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cervantes. Next, we have Crystal Raimundo. Good evening, board superintendent. I'm here once again to speak on behalf of my children and all the children in the Eastside community. We have been left without schools here, elementary schools. We are urging the board to reconsider the decision to close Magnolia Elementary. We are asking you to have compassion on our children on the east side. We are asking you to fight for our kids as well. We are urging you to open your eyes and look at all the kids that are being displaced, that are being asked at such a young and crucial age to make these moves and start fresh. As a parent of a child with ADHD, I am torn and hurt from my child, knowing that this change will only affect him negatively, not only at school, but at home, which will then put him in a position where his learning experience will be affected not to mention how hard of a time my child has making friends. I would hate for my son to be pushed into a negative mental state. I am asking you as a mother to please, please reconsider. We have been left without 
an elementary school close enough to home in case of an emergency. What are we to, what are we to do when schools are placed on lockdown? Has it happened? To simply close Magnolia to the lack of density and type of community that we are in does not mean that we do not come from the same background, that we also have the same difficult difficulties and struggles. By taking our only school in reach, you are taking those opportunities, now forcing the community, my community, my children. What are, you're taking away from them, what you are fighting so hard for to give other children, better opportunities and a school close to home. We are asking, we are not asking you to close any other school. We are asking you to keep our school open. We are pleading with you to reconsider and think about the consequences of your decision. I am simply torn with the decision and feel like we are being pushed out by the board and their personal agenda. Thank you. Thanks, Ramondo. Next, we have Lisa Serrano. I believe the mic is off. Good evening. I'm here once again, asking that all of you reconsider the closure of Magnolia Elementary. At the December 21st school board meeting, Sabrina Bo stated that she wanted to be fiscally responsible to this district, something, something I find completely contradicting because she was the one to bring up closing Magnolia Elementary, a completely modernized campus, and instead keep open two campuses that require millions of dollars to update and stay open. This decision was rushed, and since then, no clear transparent reasoning has been given to the Azusa community. This past weekend, myself and other advocates for Magnolia did the 2.4 mile walk from Magnolia Elementary to Murray Elementary and back. A walk many students will have to do alone on hot days, on cold days, even rainy days. They will walk alongside the heavy traffic of Gladstone Street. They will walk on the harsh sidewalk full of cracks, which we saw. They will walk past the line of semi trucks parked on Gladstone where no cars passing can see them, which we saw. They will cross busy intersections like Citrus and Gladstone, Cerritos and Gladstone. They will have to make their way through the heavy traffic the Murray neighborhood has. Twice a day, they will go through these struggles with heavy backpacks on carrying their lunches and projects. We cannot put students through these conditions. It is not fair and it is not right. When I was in front of Murray, I spoke to neighbors. They had no knowledge of Magnolia's closure and the hundreds of students that would now be coming to their school. They were extremely upset. They explained that their neighborhood is a madhouse during school drop off and pick up. They said the congestion is horrible and having more students will only make it worse. They were more appalled when I brought up the financial aspect of this decision. They felt like the school board was taking away money from their students. Watching past meetings, it is clear that there are no school board members advocating for Magnolia. None of you spoke up about the modernized campus. None of you mentioned the students that come to Magnolia after the closure of Gladstone Street School. None of you mentioned the students that are at Magnolia through open enrollment. There were members fighting for Dalton and Lee, but none for Magnolia. It is completely unfair that students are being left behind by their school board. I vote for some of you, I'm sorry, I voted for some of you for school board members because I thought you would do a good job. It has become apparent that you have let personal agendas get in the way of doing what is logically correct. It is logical to keep Magnolia open. I came here today to ask you all to reconsider your decision to close Magnolia because although my children have graduated and I am past this district, I can clearly Thank see. Thank you, Ms. Serrano. Thank you. Next, we have Sarah Serrano. Hello. Am 
month ago, the Zusa community came out to the school board meeting asking that the board listen to its constituents. We were fighting for the Aztec. We gave personal testimony as well as evidence and examples of how the Aztec can live on respectfully. Since then, the board has remained quiet about this. I will remind, I will remind you that the truth of the matter is, is that there is more than 5,000 signatures on a petition from the community asking that you keep the Aztec. Each and every one of you has chosen to ignore the constituents that voted you into this position. You are showing the people of Azusa that you believe in council culture, not allowing Azusa High School to do better, to learn from the situation. According to the Board of Education Handbook, your vision is that each student will be a problem solver, critical, critical thinker, and effective communicator. Yet you are not allowing the people of Azusa to problem solve this issue. You are, not allowing, you are now allowing gentrification to continue in Azusa by cutting history and culture and connection to Latino roots. And worst of all, you are not doing your job. You are supposed to represent the whole district, each school and all the students and listen to their wants and needs. Beyond the Aztec, there has been another horrible decision, which is to close Magnolia Elementary. A decision that was brought up by Sabrina Bow, a, a decision that will cost the district millions of dollars to keep schools like Lee and Dalton open, and a decision that will put students' lives at risk, as they will now have to make the harsh walk to Murray Elementary. But most importantly, a decision that was brought up with no logical reasoning. Magnolia is a completely modernized school. Families have moved to the city to send their children to Magnolia. These are points I wish the school board would bring up. I wish one of you was willing to fight for these students that you claim to represent. Sabrina Bow, I wish this was a case where you could answer me back and give me reason to why you suggested Magnolia. I would like to hear answers to all my questions, like have you ever visited Magnolia's campus? Why do you have a website dedicated to a charter school in Rosedale? Are you advocating for Rosedale parents to send their children to Azusa schools? This whole setup where I speak at the board is honestly ridiculous. We need an open dialogue where we can have our questions answered and we need transparency. Getting emails after the fact and meeting outside of the setting where others can't hear and gain more knowledge is not enough. I do appreciate the school board members that reached out to me and want to meet, and hopefully we can discuss getting this type of dialogue at meetings. I will end with what I said at last meeting and the meeting before that. Um, which is to the people here tonight and the people at home, I would like to remind you that we vote for our school board. We are the reason these individuals are up here. They're supposed to represent us and what we want. If you feel like they're not doing their job, vote them out. Three school board members, Gabriela Ariana, Shilunin Cruz Gonzalez, and Adrian Greer all have terms that end this year. Sabrina Bow and Yolanda Pena have terms that end in 2024. They are quick to make changes and we have the power to do the same when we vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rano. At, at this time, due to board policy, uh, there's a requirement for us to take uh, board action in order to continue with uh, public comment since we've surpassed uh, 21 minutes. And so is there a, is there a motion to, um, well, I, I, let me just pull the board. Is a motion there... on the floor to continue. I, I second. Uh, so, and then we'll go and we'll go and vote. Just yes. by hand vote. Yes. 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 And I am also yes. Um, Mr. Uh, Richard Covington. Hello, board. Uh, thank you for hearing me out. Uh, I'll keep it short today. Uh, I heard a lot of good things, a lot about facts. Uh, when I took the walk from Magnolia to that school, there's facts. Some of these families are not going to be able to take that walk. Some of the families that go to the school in the community, there's no way they could that trek. That, that it is ridiculous how far it is. And the streets and the things we have to pass through to get there. I, I mean, I, I've seen, I know for a fact my sister and her kids, they couldn't be here today, she's working, but they, there's no way that they could continue their lives and still have to run back and forth. So that's, um, we need a school in our community, one that's safe, what Magnolia seems like a great choice. I, I just don't understand why we would close the entire area of the east side of Azusa. We, we need something for our community. And another thing is, <clears throat> what if something happens during the day to where parents had to pick up their children from that school? That a lot of folks aren't going to be able to just run a mile and a half, you know? Oh, well, that's all. Thank you. Mr. Covington. Next, we have Louis Pedraza. 
Good evening, board members. I spoke here uh, about a month ago on the Aztec name change. Um, I believe it's on your agenda today to discuss a new name for the school. I believe changing the name is wrong. How many of you here have heard the term, if it's not broke, why fix it? That name is not broken. It is not wrong. It does not need to be fixed. To say that name is wrong, to want to change it, you're saying that every person that's worked at that school, principal, teacher, assistant principal, everyone that's wore that Aztec name on their shirt, you're saying that they're wrong or they don't know the difference between right or wrong. That name is not wrong. What is wrong is I've reached out to every one of you because I echo what Sarah has said. You know, we can't ask you questions and we can't really discuss this with you. I've reached out to every one of you and only Adrian has reached back to me. You said we were going to talk and I have yet to hear from you. I've reached out plenty of times, no response. What makes a great city? What, what makes a city great? It's the community, right? We have overwhelming majority of the people that want that name change. I'm sorry, they want that name to stay. We want it to stay. Let's compromise. My proposal, you keep the name, drop the Aztec headdress. People are offended by it, okay? Most of us aren't. Let's compromise, right? Meet in the middle. The name stays, maybe drop the headdress, right? On the football helmets now, a lot of the stuff has the A with the spear or the arrow or however you want to call it. There's got to be a compromise. Get back with us. Talk to us. We want to, I want to express more on why it's very important. And I want to hear why you think it's important to change. We ask to hear from you, but we don't. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pedraga. Next, we have Tamara Meza. Our lives begin to end the day. I'm silent about the things that, uh, that matter. That was said by Martin Luther King Jr. And what he meant by this was that if we don't say anything or do anything, things will put things could potentially get worse or stay the same. Good evening, Board President Greer, Honorable School Board, Superintendent Ortega, Cabinet, and everyone here and watching at home. I am here tonight to talk about the decision to close down Magnolia Elementary. Magnolia is widely ac accessible by everybody. There are many types of tra transportation people use to get walking, biking, car, et cetera. Therefore, closing the school down would be harder due to traffic. Closing down Magnolia is a disadvantage because of traffic jam. Closing down Magnolia is a disadvantage because of social isolation. Schools are the core of social activity and human interaction. When schools close, many children and youth will miss out on social contact that is essential to learning and development and some find it harder trying to fit in into the new school. More, moreover, many parents unprepared for distance and home. Moreover, many parents are unprepared for distance and homeschooling. When schools close, parents are often asked to facilitate the learning of their children at home and can struggle to perform this task. This is, this is especially true for parents with limited, limited education and resources. I've always heard the same things with people that hold power or want to gain power, and that is that our opinions matter and that they want the best of us. Well, this is a huge need for our community, so why not reconsider this decision for one? Thank you, Ms. Mesa. Next, we have Mitchell Loera. Hello, good evening. Uh, it's my first time in front of uh, the school board. Uh, the reason I'm here is going to be because of the rebranding of the uh, Azusa High School. Um, I'm an alumni of Azusa High. I graduated in 2009. Uh, my, all my siblings went to Azusa High. Um, I'm currently a coach at Azusa High. And um, I just want to say that I am not for the changing of the name. I am not for the changing of the colors. 
um, going to uh, big sporting events like uh, cross country races. We're there with dozens of schools, schools from across the country. Um, the baby blue, the light blue of Azusa High is something so unique that a lot of schools don't have. And um, changing that would be like a huge mistake in my opinion. Um, as for the name, I mean, there's Glendora High School, there's San Dimas High School, there's Doherty High School, there should be an Azusa High School. I've heard these names uh, thrown about like Mountain View or some weird uh, names, but it's like, there should be, keep it Azusa High. It just makes sense. Like, why would you, as the previous uh, speaker spoke, like, why would you change something that's not broken? Like, it's fine. Um, as for the uh, mascot, I do agree uh, with my fellow speaker that, you know, changes can be made to make it more culturally appropriate. Um, however, I do think having the mascot uh, being Aztec is almost a sense of pride. Um, you know, the demographics of Azusa are mostly Latino and Hispanic, primarily Mexican. And I'm Mexican myself. And when I would see the Aztec, you know, it would go against, you know, the other surrounding schools. And it was like a sense of pride, like we're the Aztec. Um, but I think it would be a huge mistake to change, uh, to change the mascot, to change the colors, to change the name. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I really hope you reconsider uh, changing that. I think it's really a, a huge part of Azusa's history. And, uh, and yeah, just please reconsider. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laura. Next, we have Francisco Duran. Hello. Good evening, Board President Adrian Greer and fellow board members, parents, and students. My name is Francisco Duran, and I've lived here my entire life. I'm Azusa High alumni class of 2009. My sisters graduated from Azusa in 1999 and 1997. My wife is Azusa High class of 2007 and currently works as an SSA aide at the Gladstone High School helping you know, the students with special needs. I'd like to first comment on the rebranding of Azusa High School. It has been Azusa High's, uh, Azusa's high school since the 1950s and has a history tied closely to the modern history of Azusa. It saw the orchards turn into tract homes and has been a symbol of the city's commitment to education. I think the entire rebranding is a wildly silly endeavor when we are literally in the middle of picking and choosing what community members will lose local schools and what classified staff will be let go because of budget cuts. And in the midst of this, you decide to waste close to a million dollars. I hope lining the pockets of private industry is worth it. I understand the Pomona Valley indigenous community came to my poor working class and mostly Chicano barrio and convinced you to waste money we don't have to change the mascot. I've given up on that point, but allow me to plead to keep the colors Allow us to have what memories and heritage we've always had. A lot of the sports teams have baby blue and black uniforms with only Azusa across the chest or back. It'll be easy to keep those and only change the mascot. Uh, it'll be easier to change just the mascot on murals instead of colors. I'd also like to bring up the fact that Gladstone Middle School will keep its colors, name, and mascot. They will lose almost nothing. Also, board member Gabriela Arellano you did not bring up indigenous rights at all the first time you spoke in favor of the rebrand. And suddenly you were the most woke individual in the room the second time. Who do you work for? What's your interest in this rebrand? You said we can find the money for our students when fighting for the rebrand. I hope you're willing to fight to find money to supply our students with the tools and supplies they need to succeed in the future. I want to see it. Lastly, I grew up in the Citrus Islands, the unincorporated community that is right here, right next to the school district offices. And I walked one mile to Gladstone Street Elementary, even though I lived 0.3 miles away from Magnolia back when you guys had closed boundaries. Uh, I was carrying a saxophone one mile as an eight year old and I was grueling. Now both those schools are gone and the Citrus Islands are losing their representative seat. We're not gonna have a vote. You're silencing us because we're a poor and unincorporated community. We, I wrote Azusa on all of the forms that I ever filled out where I live. Azusa is on my driver's license. Azusa was on there when I applied for my first jobs, when I applied for universities. 
I live in Azusa, as far as I know, just because politics don't haven't absorbed us into the community doesn't mean I'm not part of the community. Thank you for serving my mom's community and helping to alienate us and the hermanos that live around here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duran. Do we have additional speakers? Uh, next, we have Joanna Lemus. Okay. Hi, good evening, Board President Greer, members of the board, superintendent, and other members in attendance. My name is Joanna Lemus. I'm here to speak on behalf of hundreds of families on the east side of Azusa that are losing access to elementary schools. I believe the board's decision to close Magnolia and Powell was inequitable and done without justification. You have yet to prove to us how this is a good decision. From every angle that we see it, it makes no sense. We have families that live on the east area, borderline Azusa and Glendora, some even in Glendora, who come to Magnolia Elementary. We have many that have already been displaced with the closure of Gladstone School just a few years ago. And now once again, our East community is being targeted with you deciding to close our only two remaining elementary schools. You are creating an unnecessary burden on families, limiting opportunities for us. Magnolia is a great visible location, is at a great visible location, accessible, convenient for parents that use public transportation, has a capacity to, to accommodate growth and has been upgraded. All we are asking is that you keep open a school for our community, especially since our community um, you know, has already been displaced so much. We have an online growing petition with over 800 signatures of people who all support the families of Magnolia Elementary and see that this is unreasonable and want to see Magnolia remain open. Our community got together, held a walk and talk event, as you have already heard. You all had been invited. Not one of you showed up which tells us that you don't care about our community. The arguments that were made to keep Lee and Dalton open were that they were too far from each other. And so instead you left a bigger gap for the East community. Families on the East side of Azusa that already used to travel to get to Magnolia will now face an even longer distance to get to other schools. How do you expect to attract families from neighboring cities if you keep eliminating the schools that would expand opportunities and invite families in? Our schools are no longer accessible for families on the East side of Azusa. Even families right now that have preschool or TK age children are being left without a school beginning this next school year. So parents like myself are already feeling the negative impact of this closure and feel forced to leave the district even before the official close of Magnolia. There are so many families that were blindsided by this decision. Some are non-English speakers and I believe that there has not been enough public notification to communicate this information to families. We ask that you stop targeting the East area of Azusa. Please reconsider before it's too late. I believe that you must be seeing by now how closing Magnolia was not the right decision. So again, we ask, please keep Magnolia open. Thank you. And then we have Christina Castaneda. Hi, good evening, board members. Um, I just wanted to be an additional voice tonight um, for and and plead for your reconsideration of um, on changing the Aztec name. I've already spoken before. I've written my formal um, letter and have spoken out, have, have submitted questions. Um, I don't know if those were actually posted um, on the last meeting that I attended, but I, I do, I just, I really do just want to be, um, I want to, I want to th say thank you to Sarah, Louis, Mitchell, Francisco, all of you guys for, for um, voicing your, just your, your thoughts on this and, and, and board members, I just, I know, you know, how much this means to our community. And I hope that you really do hear our pleas for this because it, it is so important to us. Um, I, I've, I've said it a million times. Um, I'm not just an alumni, I'm a parent. Um, I'm a coach. And I just, please, you guys, please listen, please hear us when we're trying to give you all of these facts, all of, I mean, I don't know how many times we have to repeat ourselves where we're, I'm going to pray for change. And I just really hope that you guys um, reconsider the branding because I mean, we're such a tight knit community. And I know some of you have attended our fundraisers. Um, uh, Ms. Pena, we love you. We, you're always there for us. You're always supporting us. And and I just, I really hope that you guys, you guys see that how much this means to us. And, and if you could just maybe what Louis said, 
maybe we can go and do without the headdress, um, but please let us keep our Aztec name, our colors. Um, we spoke with um, our future um, uh, principal and he mentioned that, you know, art was super important and, you know, the murals, I mean, just thinking about all of that, you know, and maybe, maybe he put, out, put it out there that maybe we could bring something from Gladstone and keep the murals. I, I'm really hoping that that we can really just, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm like, I'm fumbling over my words right now because I'm just really scared that, that this is actually going to change. And I'm scared that we're not going to be heard. Um, but I really do hope that you guys listen to us and, and just take, take us into consideration before you vote for this change. Um, and and uh, Ms. Arianes, you know, you're close to us too. And, and I know that you know what it's like to be a coach, what it's like to, to believe in, in a... these guys. That's all I can say. Um, thank you guys, everyone else who spoke on this. And I just hope that, that um, it goes in our favor and all of the facts and all of the, the you know, the outpouring from our community is hitting you guys and you guys are really like taking it in. I also agree with the Powell and the Magnolia. Um, I just don't understand how, how that's going to work either, but you know, I'm praying for a better outcome. Um, Thank you, Ms. Castaneda. It does appear we have no more uh, commenters. And so we will move on to item 7.0 and specifically 7.1 comments, reports, and requests by the Board of Education. Board Member Ardianis. I have none for today. Thank you. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez. Um, I, I, I do, I do want to say I, I think we do need to find some way to have a, a, some kind of conversation with the Magnolia School community. I feel like we've had them come now for several months now, and I. I know if I was a parent there, I'd be very frustrated that in an official setting, they're not able to have, we're not able to have a discussion about this. Um, so I'm not sure how that can happen. I, I, but I think we need to figure out, like, that's my request is we need to figure out how to have that, have a more formal conversation um, about this in a formal setting. Um, I, I would like to make the motion to put it on the next agenda. Well, I, I don't think that we're able to do that just because of the way Brown Act works, but I, I, that's that's a request that I'm putting forward. And I would like to go ahead and bring it up to the board right now. I mean, you know, what what is going to, I mean, can we bring it back as an agenda item to discuss it, to be able to look at the possibilities of, yes, looking at all of this, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I have to say this, I, I'm upset. Look at you guys. <laughs> I'm upset. Because that's exactly what I was trying to state when I did say we need a school on the east side. I, I don't know how to, you know, I, I would like us to, you know, I would like to bring this item back. I would like for us to look at everything that, you know, the reconfiguration team took the time, took the time to do all this for us. You know, I, I, I think I, I feel really strongly that we, we should reconsider this for Magnolia. And I'm asking the board right now, I would like to bring this item back. I need, I, I would like to uh, board president. So, I'm asking you formally. Yeah. So just for, just for clarity, there's, cause there's, there's two different, uh, request that I heard. So one was from board member Cruz Gonzalez, which is to allow for a formal conversation to take place where there can be dialogue between the board and the community around this, around the, the Magnolia conversation. And, and what I, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, there's a, a, a second re request, which is not the same, which is to have, to, to bring this item back for reconsideration. Absolutely. Why are well, we going to go, excuse me, why are we going to go back and forth? Yeah, so I, I'm, board, I'm, you know, I would like to bring it back as an item for us to discuss it and reconsider that. I would like to vote on it again. Okay, so that I, will require. I, well, I'm sorry. But, hold on, President. No, so we actually. You no, can't excuse speak. me. I'm not. No, no, excuse me. Hold on. I'm board, still speaking. Board member Adianis, uh, you, board you board interrupted board board member Cruz Cruz Gonzalez. It's let's, just let's we we, can, we just can't discuss right. rationale, right? So we can't. So you can make a request, but we can't. You can, we can't talk about why we want to do something. I understand that, but. 
what what I'm asking right now is to bring this back. Right, and I'm seeking board direction now. So there's two requests that were that were here. So one is from one is from board member Cruz Gonzalez to have a conversation around the item, and another one is to bring the item back. So, so I'm looking to the board for for direction. So I prefer what Gabriela was suggested. I mean, I, I think my vote. Right. Well, yes. So if if she wants to bring it back for reconsideration, that that's even better than having a a conversation. And I'm the one that voted no because I was confused. But I want to talk about it more. I'm not I'm not comfortable with my vote. Oh, so. Um, I'll, I'll look to the other two board members. Yes. Yes. Okay, then we will we will bring this back at a future at a future meeting. Um, oh. Board member Cruz please. Continue. No, um, that was I mean that was just the one thing that I was going to say. Um, yeah, the other one, one's on the agenda, so I can wait for that item. Board member Bo. Uh, no comments this evening. Board member Rodriguez Pena. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you, everyone, for being here today and voicing your opinion. That's the most important thing. If you have want to make a change and you want to make a change or have something done, is to come up and speak in front of the community or the board or the city council or wherever you need to go. Um, so kudos for that, everybody. I just want to announce that the um, AMA, the Zusa Management Association, Association Orator Contest, I wanted to congratulate all the students that participated. They did a great job. The theme was to ride the wave. And they had such great speeches, all these students. I wanted to congratulate first place winner, Emily Reese from Azusa High School. She will now move on to the original competition. I also um, attended the I'm a Rotarian also. So the Azusa Rotary, we had a luncheon and the guest speaker was uh, Dr. Gomez from Azusa High. And he spoke about all the great programs that they have with Azusa High and all the sports programs that some of the Rotarians were not aware because they do not live in our community. Um, I also attended the uh, city of Azusa and the Azusa Unified School District ad hoc committee meeting. The discussions were regarding the school reorganization updates, traffic safety um, for the school year 23 and 24, uh, partnering, partnering with them to purchase lawn signs for our high school seniors. We did that for the last three years. And um, we, we spoke about the CEQA uh, document for the old schoolhouse that's located at the Slauson Middle School campus. And I wanna call in, I'm calling out to all high school seniors, Azusa Leaders for Learning Educational Foundation and Azusa Sister City are giving $1,000 scholarship to each high school. The contact person at Azusa High is Ms. Hernandez at, um, the Career Center, Ms. Madden at Glaston High School, in the Career Center also, and Ms. D. Davis at Sierra High School. She's a teacher, so if you go in the main office, um, you can get an application. And the deadline date for that is March 25th. I also would like to close in memory of Alexis Romero. She was an employee at Azusa High School that passed away. Thank you. And I would like to uh, say thank you to the to the parents and, and community members who who reached out and, and who I had the opportunity to sit with to talk with on the phone. Thank you for for that space. I know that there are a couple other who we either played phone tag or email tag a, a little bit. And so um, I'll be following up and still looking to to have those conversations with those who I've who I've not yet had the opportunity um, to to connect with either over the phone or or in person. Um, with that in mind, I did state that at this meeting, I would communicate out uh, something that, I, that, I, that I've done semi-regularly, but though I haven't done it in a while, is to hold an online coffee where there's space for um, just a number of conversations to, to be able to come up and allow for some, for some dialogue. Um, and so I will be scheduling this next one on March 24th. Um, and so that is, uh, it will be on Zoom. And that's something that I will make available. I typically share it out on, on social media channels. I, it's also something that I, I share out to anybody who has ever been to a previous one. Uh, you'll get an email. If that's something that you would like the information on to, to be able to come and, and, and really the, it's wide open to speak about, I'd say almost anything. Some, some things are, are, we're not able to, to speak at, but, but most, most things and, and some of the, most of the things that are discussed here, there is space to be able to, to discuss those. So that will be happening on March 24th at 6 p.m. And so I'll send that information out. And again, it's open to anyone in the community to be able to, to join in and, uh, and, and be part of that conversation. With that, we move on to item uh, 8.0, comments and, and 8.1, comments and reports 
by the superintendent, cabinet, student, uh, and student school board members. And I do believe that we have our student school board members on, uh, Crystal Flamino. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Gladstone would like to congratulate Monique Medina, Monique Medina for being named the Montview League MVP for girls soccer. Gladstone will be having a Sadie's Hawkins dance on Friday, March 11th from 7 to 11 p.m. on the outdoor stage. The art show for Abigail Sanchez will continue in the art gallery through March 11th. The dates are March 1st, 3rd, 8th, 10th, and 11th from 3 to 5 p.m. Spring sports, baseball, and softball have begun. Badminton, swimming, and track and field will begin on the week of March 14th. Softball and baseball have a non-league game on Friday, softball home and baseball away against Baldwin Park. Girls play home at 315. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. And next we have Hannah Hamilton. Good evening, school board. This week, Best Buddies Club is promoting, promoting spread the word to end the word activities this week. This Friday, they will have a fundraiser to pie a staff member or student. It should be a lot of fun. We had our senior meeting last Friday and we're excited to hear the updates for grad night, prom, Sadie's dance, senior barbecue, and our all-class competition, Chaos in the Canyons. Softball, baseball, batman, golf, track, and tennis seasons are in full swing. Good luck to all of our teams. Last week, we completed the English SBAC IABs and this week we are conducting the math SPAC IABs. The results will give us valuable data on how we can better prepare for the actual SPAC in April. Congratulations to the following student athletes for receiving Montview League honors. Our league MVPs are Hannah Hamilton for volleyball, Nathan Noguez and Martin Cuevas Jr. for football. Our first team all leagues are Alex, Alexander Pena for basketball, Hannah Hamilton and Freddie Hernandez for soccer, and Alex Caballero for volleyball. Our second team all leagues are Yaneli Artiega, Oswaldo Barajas for soccer, Juan Carnides for basketball, and Claudia Barone and Mia Pedroza for volleyball. And our honorable mentions are Jessica Asensio, Anna Kukal, Ramiro Mondragon Reynosa, and Carlos Rosales for soccer. Congratulations. And finally, congratulations to Emily Ruiz, Lisa Ng, Melanie Perez, and Isabel Rodusco for participating and winning some scholarships in the recent AXA oratory contest and oratory speech contest. Good evening, thank you so much. And Hannah, if I heard you correctly, you, you said your name twice there with, within that. And so uh, you, you gave congratulations to everybody else, including yourself, but we wanna also throw a congratulations from us to you on, on both of those uh, achievements that you listed out. Thank you so much. <laughs> We turn it over to Superintendent and Cabinet. I just want to take a quick moment to uh, congratulate uh, Emily Reese, a student at Azusa High School, back-to-back uh, -back, uh, wins on a speech contest. Uh, so just wanted to uh, congratulate her uh, for that and thank everyone who has invested so much uh, in our students. And then also uh, to Abigail Sanchez, who uh, is having her first uh, student solo art show at Glasswood High School. Um, it's breathtaking uh, what she uh, is creating uh, artistically. Uh, and again, just many, many thanks to, to everyone who has invested in, in her development. Uh, the show is, is it's, it's, it's awesome. It is very, very awesome to see uh, what she's producing. So just wanted to congratulate both of those students. I also wanted to um, uh, echo what uh, Superintendent Ortega said regarding um, Abigail Sanchez's show at Gladstone High School and offer um, my thanks and congratulations to the entire secondary art department. They have been working collaboratively in a PLC for quite some time. Um, and the work that they are doing to produce uh, and support our artists is absolutely outstanding. So I just wanted to recognize the teachers. Thank you. I don't have any comments for tonight. Thank you. No comments tonight. Thank you. 
Then we will move on to 9.0 general functions and specifically 9.1 presentation of school reorganization update. Mr. Ortega. Thank you very much, uh, Board President uh, Greer. Uh, we're uh, excited to um, uh, provide a school reorganization update. Uh, this will be one of uh, many uh, coming uh, in the near future as we continue to um, move on our school reorganization process. Uh, as all of you know, this is a process uh, that begins uh, next school year um, and moves into the following school year. I want to uh, begin by uh, sharing that um, we uh, have created a shared document uh, that all of the departments uh, speak into and write into. Uh, it is a way to memorial memorialize uh, the the things, the the numerous things that need to be accomplished as we are moving forward uh, with school reorganization. Uh, we have also instituted a weekly meeting uh, to provide updates, clarify questions. Um, make decisions. Um, and so those meetings are, again, just meant for that. Uh, obviously, as, away from the meetings, uh, the, de the departments and, the, and staff are working really hard uh, to uh, implement the decisions around school reorganization. So I just want to um, give thanks uh, to all the staff that has been working diligently uh, on this topic. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to um, staff who will give provide a little bit more details on some of the topics. Um, good evening. So I will address boundaries, transportation, and facilities. So I'll, um, with our partner, Power School, formerly Decision Insight, um, they have successfully redrew or redrawn our boundaries based on the school reorganization plan. So what this means is that Charles H. Lee boundaries will expand to include Powell's boundaries. Clifford D. Murray boundaries will expand to include Magnolia, and Valleydale boundaries will expand to include Ellington. Though we have our new boundaries on um, the outlined new home schools for our families, the district will continue to offer school of choice. Can, can you repeat those because they're not up there so I can't see them? So can you just repeat those again so that I can, in my mind? What yes, ma'am. So Charles, e., Charles H. Lee boundaries will expand to include Powell. Clifford Murray boundaries will expand to include Magnolia, and Valleydale's boundaries will expand to include Ellington. We, for as far as transportation, school to school transportation will be provided. Um, as the district begins to communicate the boundaries and routes, the, as the district can, um, plans to communicate the boundaries to the community, routes and times will be made available to our family. At this time, we have committed to having at least one pickup and drop off location at our closed site. For example, based on the current approved site closure, there will be a pickup and drop off location at Powell to transport students to leave. Moving to facility, our director of um, maintenance and operation, Mr. Brian Allen, along with our architects, have walked all of our campuses to provide the Board of Education with a detailed listing of the conditions of our site. This report is being compiled as a result of the walk and will be set in categories um, that outline the following. Things that need to be addressed based off of safety, modernization, and we will also have uh, enhancement and upgrade um, tab. This list will include the projected timeline and cost for all of the recommendations. Our goal is to have the complete report and present the findings to the Board of Education by the end of March or early April. Thank you. All right, at our next Board of Education meeting on March 15th, we are going to provide a presentation on our planning for our AUSD 23-24 elementary and secondary programmatic offerings. Uh, part of the preparation has been getting input from our education partner groups on potential programmatic offerings. And so far, we have uh, met with our elementary and secondary academic articulation and advisory committees. We met with a student advisory committee. Um, we've met with our site and district administrators, and we have plans to meet uh, with additional student and parent groups as well. Uh, as a preview, uh, in addition to considering new programs, we are working to continually align elementary and secondary college and career pathways 
in programs such as visual and performing art, media art, STEM, elementary and secondary literacy initiatives, dual immersion, and SEAL, which is Sobrato Early Academic Language. Uh, we're looking forward to um, presenting our programmatic offerings to you on the 15th. Thank you. At some point, we'll we get a list of those in writing, um, writing to this. Of the programmatic offerings? Yes. Yes, we're going to provide um, presentation, but we can also put that in writing um, in, the, in, a, that. Yeah. Yeah, in the board packet. Sure. Thank you. Good evening. I will be speaking of, uh, uh, on staffing and the negotiating impacts and effects. The, re the resolution to reduce or discontinue positions in the earlier board action was a result of our staffing projections um, change for next year as we move forward with school reorganization. Uh, further, the 22-23 school year, we anticipate certificated staff transfers of uh, teachers and certificated staff at Ellington, Magnolia, Powell, and Gladstone High School. As for classified employees, we do not anticipate transfers of CSDA employees for the 2022-2023 school year. In the 2023-2024 school year, as the identified schools close, we will need to reduce or transfer classified employees. Similarly, for the 2022-2023 school year, we will need to reduce or discontinue the number of management employees we have in the school district. Moving on to negotiating impacts and effects, uh, we recently added two additional negotiation sessions with the Astuza Educators Association, AEA. In addition to our regularly scheduled sessions, we will meet to negotiate with AEA on Thursday, March 10th, and Monday, March 14th. We'll, the schedule will include negotiating the impacts and effects of school closure. We have our regularly scheduled negotiation sessions with CSDA on March uh, 9th, and if needed, we can also add sessions to negotiate the impacts and effects with CSDA. Good evening. I'd like to give an update on the ninth graders over, they're all going to be at Azusa High School next year. First of all, we have determined that all ninth graders will fit at the Azusa High School campus in the 22-23 school year. We are planning a three half day ninth grade orientation experience that will include outdoor activities in nature around our community, culture building, motivational speakers, link through activities, parent engagement, and a campus tour. We have recruited teachers and staff from Azusa High School and Gladstone High School who will work together to plan this experience for ninth graders and will recruit 10th and 11th graders from Azusa High School and Gladstone High School to help mentor the ninth graders. The goal is to use the link crew next year as a means of transitioning the two student bodies together. We have identified introductory CTE courses from Gladstone in the medical pathway and the digital media arts pathway that we will add to the current CTE pathways at Azusa High School. And we will host the virtual eighth grade parent night to showcase Azusa High School programs on March 10th at six o'clock to be followed later in May with the in-person expo at Azusa High School. And now to speak on our draft of the high school mascot and color selection process, I would like to invite uh, Crystal and Hannah to speak first about the context for this work here. We can have Hannah and Crystal speak. On January 26, Mr. Ortega hosted a student advisory council meeting with representatives from Azusa High School, Gladson High School, and Sierra High School to discuss a process for selecting the mascot and colors for Azusa High School. These students started in small groups to discuss their ideas for mascot and color selection that would be fair to those impacted by the decision. After initial idea generation, students formed larger groups and listed to each other's ideas and developed a final set of recommendations. These recommendations are included in the process Mr. Fernandez will be sharing tonight. All right, so before I go into the, the description of the process, I do want to share that we consolidated the student ideas into this process here. 
we took this process draft on a road show. We did share it with students. We shared it with parents and we shared it with the Zoo Unified uh, staff to get their feedback on this draft that I am presenting to you tonight. So first of all, um, we would like to form a committee from the three high schools, including special education and EL voices within that student committee. Then the committee will meet and design an initial survey to pull all current seventh through 11th graders in a Zeus Unified while in school. Um, that there will need to be a strong message campaign for students before that initial survey occurs to make sure that there's good understanding that that survey is occurring and what to expect. Then that initial survey of students will be conducted. After the initial survey is conducted, uh, that student committee again will meet to review the responses and develop a final survey. Another message campaign that will go out to students, parents, and staff who will be participating in the final survey. That final survey will pull all seventh through 12th graders in Azusa Unified, their parents, and the Azusa Unified staff. And that finally, that final recommendation from that final survey will be presented to the Board of Education. I have a question on that. I'd like to know at any at any time I didn't hear uh, that the community would have a survey or input on on any of these uh, on the final choices. So the outside the of the final survey, another part for the other community members to speak into it. But yes, yeah, the community. Yes, okay. this is the community. Or even participate, right? I mean, I, I think yeah. I was, I think in our initial conversation, I don't believe we were talking about having just a student only. I mean, I appreciate that we want to make sure that we have student voice in the decision, but I think we have a lot of active alumni, as we can see in the audience. We have people that want to engage. And so, I, I mean, I, so I agree with, with yeah. Yolanda. I think that was, I thought it was going to be like a multi-sector. Yeah. I, I, I thought originally it was going to be community. I didn't see it here. That's why I'm, I'm questioning that. Thank you. Okay. So just for, that was, for, that was my understanding as well. Okay. Just for clarity. Um, so in bullet one, um, are we saying that this committee that right now the students, when they created this, that it would be just students that, that, that are we saying that the, the board is saying that in that first one, we should expand a wider net or are you saying that no in bull or maybe it's both in bull in the sub in the second to last bullet, uh, that's where community should also be involved in that. I personally would like to um, have them be involved on selecting on the, under the selection. Um, at what point when they're going to select the final um, model, right? So in final this, I, I'm not sure where it falls into here. Sure. I'm just saying. Uh, the way the, the students designed this and we got a lot of feedback, um, there wouldn't be a committee selecting the mascot. Uh, that would be... Um, and actually, I take that back. It's mascot and colors. Um, that would be based on a survey. So the right. survey would dictate um, the selection of the mascot and the colors. And the survey going to? Right now, that survey was going to AUSD parents, 7th or 12th grade students, and staff. But what I'm... I can see it go to the community also. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I would say I would say something slightly different. I, I think ninety percent of, of of what you shared, board member um, Rodriguez Pena, I'd agree with. I think when we look back at the selection of the Aztec part, part of the conversation that we've had is that um, it was selected by the students. Um, like ultimately, um, with this, I don't see where the community is involved and where the community is able to speak into things. So I think it makes. I think having the community involved in the in the, uh, the, the the committee and even looking at you know some initial surveys that we have there, but I would say I, I would prefer to see after there's we pulled the community pulled all kinds of folks which has limited down to some some options that the final say come from the students as opposed to um, just across across the the community because it will be our students who are who are going to be kind of carrying and championing whatever that that mascot ends up being. But originally I. I recall speaking about the community's input at some point of this process. Right. And so that's why I agree with you. I th when I look at this, I don't see where the community is there. Right. But, but I, so I, I would like to see some strong community inputs at some of these bullet points. But I think when we're looking at the, right there, it says the second to last point says final survey polls all seventh through 12th graders in AUSD. Parents and staff, I, I, 
I mean, even if we're looking at parents and staff, I, I really look to, to students more, more so to, to make some of the final, the final call than, than any of the rest of us. Because right now, it's definitely the way the, the students designed it, it's really the opposite, right? So the students are the ones that will be the first to voice into this initial survey, which is not about select your favorite mascot and colors. It's about, hey, what do you think the future mascot of Azusa High School should be and why? So it's getting input from 7th through 11th graders on what they feel the mascot should be, why it should be, and what the colors are. Well, what I mean, I, I mean, uh, Henry Tega, like, uh, for example, we, we narrow it down to five or three, wherever, then the community would be able to have input on. Is that, does that make sense? Or it makes sense, but I'm, I'm hearing a, a board president yeah. Greer say the opposite. We're, we're, saying, we're, saying, we're saying the flip flop of, of each other. So I think we're both saying, Community input and student input. Yeah. Um, you're saying community input at the final at the final um, vote. I think I'm saying community in, input input on the front end and students at the final vote. You know, but, I'm I'm fine either way. I'm, um, I'm good as long as they have community has sure. input. I'm I'm fine. What What about our, our other board members? I you know I I I think that there should be community engagement in the whole even in the decision making and and the reason I think that is because I think. Operating on the assumption that only the current students in the system are the ones that have the, the valued opinions. I think as we had, the school is really, the high school is really the center of our community, right? There's a lot of connection to it. And so I think to, to say, okay, okay, because you're the, I will say lucky or unlucky ones that are in our schools right now, that you're going to make this decision and it's going to have a greater impact across our whole city and community, right? Community, because it's not just the city boundaries. Um, I, I I think that 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 should be there should be some community involvement in that in that in those in that where that how the recommendation comes to us and not just student driven. Okay, then here those are three three board members saying three different things, so which is how it happens sometimes. Uh, board member Bo, board member Arianis. So I I would like to see formal engagement of the community and and I think. I'm seeing this as a draft process, and this is our, our opportunity as a Board of Education to provide feedback. And I think what you're hearing clearly is there has to be um, a formal way to engage the community throughout the process. I'm sorry. What, what we're hearing from, from you or from the whole board? What? I'm sorry. I, I just need a clarification. What part do, do I need to clarify? What? Go ahead. Um, so actually, I actually want to be able to answer your question. So can you please repeat your question? I was just asking for a clarification. On what point? Only because it took me by surprise. So I, I need to understand what, what I, what I'm supposed to, what you would like me to clarify. And I apologize because I, I don't, that's what I was asking for clarification. I didn't understand it. I didn't know, I didn't know what you meant by that. Board, board member Bo, Bo, would you would you remind uh, would you mind just uh, kind of restarting from the beginning of your comment just for for, for sure. clarity's sake? Um, so what what I what I'm saying is um, I I I agree with the, at least what I'm hearing from the other four board members who have spoken or other three board members who have spoken to this point that um, there should be a formal way to engage community members, so non parents but community members in this process. And that, Mr. Fernandez, as you're presenting this as a process that students drafted to, to present to us, I'm seeing this process as now this is the opportunity for the Board of Education to have input into, into the process. And the second part of, of what I um, am observing or I'm feeling is um, I'm wondering, I don't have the answer, but I'm wondering how we, is there a weighted system of input from students versus input from staff and input from community, given that by sheer number, there would be more community members and fewer students. So I would ask for recommendations about how to uh, weight that. If we're, if we're, because generally when we think of a survey, we think of the total number of responses, you know, a tally. So I'm wondering how we would incorporate and would it be a weighted survey response or would it be, and would it be the same survey or tailored surveys based on student experience and community experience? 
for my writings. Um, yes, I, I think the committee does does need to be involved um, from beginning to end. I, but I do agree. So I agree with that part with Board Member Cruz and Zellis, and I, I I agree with uh, Board Member Bo, and that's why I asked for clarification. So now I understand. I, I do agree that the percentage, right? What does that look like? Because we may have, you know, more teachers than we do, you know, students or, or something like that, or more community members. And I think there needs to be a balance. And so, um, with that being said, and yeah, I agree the community needs to be involved. And that I think you both said what 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 I I don't think I did say, which is that that would be my concern is that there'd be there could be so many community members that that speak into it that it that it just completely overshadows what uh, students may have to say. So, so maybe there it looks like there you this was not made easy for staff in that I don't know that there was clear direction coming from here. Uh, maybe if there was a it possible to to put forth maybe a. a um, a couple options of, of some processes of, of, and, and kind of bring that back for us to evaluate, to look at where the community would be involved based off of what you heard here. And then we can look at the next iteration of that and, and kind of evaluate that process and quickly. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's not something like a, it's something that we'd like to see at the, at the very next. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I think that we have time, right? I think the, the school's not going to change for another year and a half. So, I don't, I don't see why we have to rush the process, but I mean, that's my personal thing. So that's that I would say, I don't feel the urgency to rush it. Um, I did want to just bring up, so I think that's good to bring back some options. I thought that was what it was going to be sort of this refinement process where, so I agree with Adrian on that. Um, in terms of options, right, I think we should make, I think we should, it would be good to re-clarify that the board has voted to keep the name as just a high school. There's not going to, there's no comment of that. The, the board voted to con consider changing the colors, but the current colors could remain, right? I think, I mean, my preference is that it remains. Um, and then the last piece was the mascot where we said it was going to change. And so I do want the, what I, I, I want the board to, to, I'm requesting the board to reconsider allowing the option of maintaining the asset. Cause I would just say, what's going to happen when we put out a survey and you get like majority coming back doing that. What do we discard that? I mean, what do we do with that? So I, so I think that there, um, that has to be part of the conversation. Um, and so that I'd ask the board to reconsider, reconsider that piece at the very least. Then I'll, I'll look to the board on reconsideration of, of uh, mascot or, or including the option of the mascot remaining as the Aztec, as one of the options up for consideration as this, uh, committee con considers options. Or for further clarification, to treat the mascot as we are currently treating the colors. Correct, where it could it could stay um, or it could change. So I'll look, look to, for direction. Um, board member Arianes. I, are you asking for we would need, consensus to give direction? We would need to form, give. We, are we taking correct? We would need to so give. We're not taking formal action because we're, it's not agendized. Correct. We're not taking formal action on this. This is to hear if the, uh, there's there's a, a request from board member uh, Cruz Gonzalez to allow for the Aztec to be included in this process. And so I'm looking to the board to to speak into the, the openness, or if not, then it remains as it is as is, which is that uh, the uh, Aztec is not an option um, for consideration. Um, so I think that so we, we know that we took board action to <clears throat> leave the colors as is or at least to leave the colors to, to be decided. They could stay the same or they could change depending on this process. And the other part of the board action was to say that the, the mascot would not be the as. And I think over the course of the past six to eight weeks, we've heard additional community feedback around a compromise or a modification of maybe it's the name Aztec, but not the um, graphical representation of the headdress. And and I did say in some of my prior board comments about um, approaching this issue with 
a rich liberal arts education and critical thinking around why are we doing the things that we're doing. So I'm at this point, I'm open to involving students and community in that process. And I would ask that as we guide that process, that we're guiding students in the develop and in the survey so that the criteria are laid out so that the students not only well, as they're designing for students and staff, maybe are designing the survey that we're, we're asking, we're getting them to understand why we're asking these questions. And it's not as black and white as up or down, but if, you know, why would we change? Why wouldn't we change? And what, what kind of um, guiding questions need to be included kind of in the pre preamble to the survey? So I'm, I'm open to that. Um, I'm open to that because I, I, I think critical thinking is really important. And, and 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 I will add that um, I I the rationale or the re reasons I said behind why I felt that it should change, uh, I still stick to the same thing. But the last meeting I also said, um, what should have really happened is maybe um, just like this young lady she did mention regarding um, how can we make it right? You know, how can we not offend the Native Americans? You know, how can we keep it there? not to have their head, I mean, I'm open for that kind of a discussion, but not to have it the word, it's gonna offend someone because it's, it's any race, anybody. But if we can make it right, I mean, I'm good with that. You know, we can make it right. And, you know, I don't know, um, well, we have to look on what, what is offense? You know, what is offense? I mean, cause that was for all of us. And um, I, I don't want to offend anyone and I don't want to make it wrong. But you know, if we want to keep it, what can we do to keep how can how can we fix it, right? Kind of like that kind of a, my mindset is there. So I, I'm good for that. If we can make it happen and make it happen right, I, I'm I'm there. So so if the if the board is going in that direction and is comfortable, and I'm not saying that we have because it would require some voting, right? Um, because we've already made a decision. I do think that. We should have that conversation sooner than later because it would be silly to have a whole pro input process if what the conversation we really want to have is how do we have, how do we, we're okay keeping the, the Aztec, but how do we make it culturally, how are we being culturally responsive? Like, so, I mean, I look at the example of San Diego State University. So they put a whole committee together to evaluate, you know, what they could do to transition away from their very, if you see their mascot, it's very egregious the way they, um, they're Monty Montezuma, right? So, but, um, and I'm not saying that we do that in Azusa, but that's a different kind of committee, right? That talks about the issues than, than a survey around what choices do we have to change it? So if we, if then, so I would, I would then say, let's have a, let's, let's reconsider the, the vote that we took in January and see where we are, right? If, if the board is, if we have a majority potential reconsidering, um, and then we can, if we, if the, if the vote changes and, and, and we say, okay, yes, we want it, we're going to keep the ASIC. Then we put together a committee that has this conversation. But, but then, and, and also, I also want to respect the students, the gladiators, the Gibson Gladstone that are going to go there. I also want to respect those students in that community, that part of the community where we are working together and we do make them feel welcome and that they are also included. So, you know, sitting here, we have to look at the big picture. You know, I, I just can't be one sided. So I am looking at the two schools. The two students, I mean, even staff. So, yeah, we have to have a deep conversation and we need to make it right if that's what we want, how we want to keep it. Um, board member Anias, one more opportunity if you had a comment to add. Then I would, uh, I would say, yeah, that it, 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 if, if we were to keep the, you know, we say, I know we've had conversations around is an aspect a mascot or, or, or there's even things to look beyond and beyond a mascot. I mean, but if, if we were to look at the, the Aztec still, still serving as a, as, some, as, a, as a symbol that is connected to Azusa High School, I would agree that it's important that if we were to do that, we would do it in a way that is culturally responsible. Um, and so, yeah, it would make sense that, that then there is a conversation that, that we have around, around what some of those culturally responsible parameters are and, and, and you know, even maybe in inviting um, even some of uh, the, the indigenous communities to be able to even speak into what, what that could look like in a, in a culturally responsible way. Um, and it probably would be important that we have that conversation prior to sending 
folks out, as you're saying, board member Cruz Gonzalez, so, so that we're not sending a group group out to come up with a particular something that that then we we look at it and say still comes back and the end result still appears to be culturally irresponsible. Um, and and I agree that what what we have had in place is not to the extent of other other examples that we've seen just around the, around the country. But I, I still think that what we have had in place um, could be better and could be more more culturally responsible. You know, one thing I, I mentioned also, so when we, I seen the petition, I seen it on Facebook, and I seen it had a, a Aztec calendar. I mean, it looked really nice. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, it was an Aztec calendar. It was still called the Aztec. And um, that's the picture they had on there. So I just thought the calendar looked nice, it, the Aztec calendar. So. so my request is, can we bring this back? The vote that we took in January for reconsideration, and have that, and then have that be on the agenda. Um, so we can clarify where we all are on that position, on that, on that. But, but I agree with Mr. Greer, uh, Board Member, uh, Board President Greer, regarding including the Indigenous people. If they can, you know, work together, everyone work together, and that's what we we should do. Um, you know, be a team. I mean, just make it right. I, I just think it'd be great because it also bring unity to the community and unity to the Native Americans and to all of us. You know, we're, we're all Chicanos, we're all from here. But you know what? If we work together, I think it'd be a, a more beautiful that way. So I do believe to your request, uh, Board Member Cruz Gonzalez, it, it, it does sound that there was sufficient board consensus to, to bring this back. So we'll work with Superintendent Ortega um, to add this to a future uh, board meeting agenda. Just for clarity, then by default, then we'll hold off on the 315 of this for right now. Yes. But we should acknowledge and thank um, the students who went through this whole effort, and we don't want them to feel like it was not for anything, right? I think. Um, so. Yeah, there's a, a we're, we'll put a pause on, on this and, and look to reconvene and bring the group back um, with, with this kind of new set of, of, of kind of parameters and, and, and guidelines that, that we're looking at after a, a board conversation. Yeah, and, and I think it's also great for the students that have worked on it. I appreciate all their work, but then again, you know, they're kids and they'll learn, you know, there's change. Change, change happens all the time. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's also a good lesson for them to know that, you know, things change. Um, Mr. Fernandez, we, that was that was quite a tangent that we, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> waiting patiently there. there at the podium. Um, <laughs> we, we don't have to quickly move to thank you unless, uh, unless there's anything else that you have for us. You're welcome. <laughs> So I, I do have some other questions related to the earlier sure, pieces. Sure, absolutely. So, sure, board member Cruz Gonzalez. No, not, not related to the high school piece. Um, so in terms of, um, so I appreciate um, clarifying um, where the enrollment boundaries are going to be. So can we get information about student enrollment, like those shifting, what that will look like at, at each of the, the schools that would be remaining so that we have, so that we understand that information? Yes. Um, because what I see here, right, there's more students going to be at Lee, Murray, and Valleydale. I don't see more students coming to Dalton is what I see right now on this list, right? right. So, we're so, so um, can we see that? And then I did want to, I did want to ask a question about, um, because I was, I was not, a, I, I assumed that kids would stay at that school until the, the closed elementary schools, all students, right, all grades would stay at the elementary school before we closed. So I was not thinking that like the TK kinder kids would go to the next school and maybe I must have missed that. But I do want to understand what is then going to be the impact on a family that has, let's say, a kid in TK or kinder, but has a third grader or a fourth grader. And what does that do for them? And let's say they have kids in middle school and high school, right? Conceivably, you could. So I, I'm not sure. I, was, I, I wasn't thinking that was going to be happening. So I think I would like to have better understanding about that before decisions are finalized. Because for next year, because I, I would have concerns about that, especially we do have many families that have two kids at one school, right? So it would make it very difficult for them. Yeah, so they'd be they'd be able to if they wanted to, right? Not forcing, but they'd be able to move. With the kids. Right, but I, what I'm suggesting is maybe that we be instead of saying yes, you can move, we would say, you know, it makes more sense to have the kids all be. We're going to keep your kids where they are, with the incoming kids. Kids, does that make sense? Like we wouldn't move TKK. So stay status quo for elementary for one more year. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I assume that was going to happen. And are you you're saying? only for elementary you're not saying the same for high school right i think the high school kids are a little older they're not um... but, 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 but they still have the opportunity for example if a ninth if they have a ninth grader going to azusa high next year and maybe they have a 10th grader 
they have the option of send, sending their 10th grader to Azusa High also. I mean, if, if transportation is a problem or, you know, I, I, they have that option. Right, uh, Superintendent Vega? Board Member Bo. Uh, Board Member Cruz, are you just suggesting that we push out the transition time by an additional year? No, it, I, well, I, I mean, in terms of instead of TK K going to their new school next year, that they would remain at their current school for one more year. So parents would have, in effect, a two year window rather than a or an 18 month window rather than a four month window to change to know where they're going to school. Well, I mean, I think in my mind, the transition happens in one from one year to the next, right? So it would happen between the end of 23 and the beginning of fall 23. So, so this is this is the meeting of, of just pulling the board on, on things. But just even just to get some, some understanding there, because this is another area where we did already make uh, some decision on. And there, may, and there obviously is already some movement toward these things. So um, just kind of one, the request from, from board member Cruz Gonzalez was for there to be some a, a options and or some, if I'm not mistaken, options under conversations before it, the, the, the plan is finalized. Um, so that's, that's the request to, to come back. So is that shared among uh, other board members or um, is the request, because if, if not, then uh, it, it will stay as it has been voted, um, which is that the incoming grades would go into new schools and parents would be invited to, to move their students to those new schools. I, I'm not clear that we voted on that. We voted on which schools to close. I think it was just a conversation. We didn't vote on the, we didn't vote on the. Process. The process. The, I mean, the, the process was presented. Was the transition plan was presented to us, but if we could consult the minutes. We voted on which schools we were going to well, close. And keep so open. can I, then, then can I see here if there is, um, if there's interest in re revisiting that, that topic? And I don't know if uh, staff, if you're able to speak. Speaking of that now, that's probably something that we just speak into if, if, it, if it comes back into the conversation, but speaking into the, the impact of that and or what has already taken place. And so that may not be something that you're prepared to, to speak into, but looking into at, at the rest of the board, is that something to also bring back for uh, conversation and, and reassess? I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I didn't, I, I thought that what he was presenting was recommendations and it wasn't like, that's why they're developing a plan, right? That's why they're developing a plan that's coming back to us in, in little bits. And so that's why I'm, I'm not asking to make decisions right now. I'll bring it up at the next meeting when they start, when they bring, when they bring reports, I could bring it up later on. I just, I didn't, I, I wasn't clear. I didn't think we were voting on a concrete plan because there wasn't one in December. Um, well, I think we talked about, actually, I do think we talked about uh, when we, when we voted, I remember because I had to state out loud the different variations and when things would happen from year to year. So I do believe that it was voted on. And if my memory served me correctly, we could check minutes, but now I'm having a distinct memory that there was clarity on those pieces. Um, and so maybe staff, can you speak to what your understanding and, and where you have been moving? Um, what, what, what did well, you take I, away? I mean, if when, that's the case, then I'm happy just, just, I'll just go back and reread the minutes just to clarify for myself. I'm happy to do I, that. I do have the minutes up and we did make a motion and vote um, that in the 22-23 school year, Paramount, Valleydale, Murray, Lee, Dalton, and Hodge, pending state approval, would be preschool through sixth grade. They will remain open. Magnolia and Powell, first through sixth, and Ellington, first through eight, will remain open. In the 23-24 school year, the designated schools to remain open will be preschool through fifth, and the designated sites to be closed will be closed. Okay, that's fine. I'm fine. All right. Any other questions then? So, so for clarity, then we move forward as, as was voted back then. then yes. any, any other questions then about this? Okay. And does that conclude the presentation, Ms. Ortega? It does. Okay. Then we move on to 9.2, voting of State of California School Boards Association Delegate Assembly Representative. A motion on the floor. I make a motion. Um, nine point two. Is your motion to do we need to nominate somebody? Danette. Well, so 
you mind if I make a motion? Yeah, um, yeah, I make a motion to, to select uh, Jeanette Flores from the Charter Oak Unified School District. We can vote for two. Oh, oh okay, I'm sorry. Then um, Steven Lanusa. Oh, I can pronounce it. Lanusa. La he pronounces it Lanusa. Uh, from uh, Claremont Unified School District. I'll second. So, Board Member Cruz Gonzalez moved to vote. Yolanda moved, not me. Did I say Cruz Gonzalez? Yeah. No, My apologies. My uh, board member Rodriguez Pena moved to uh, vote for Jeanette Flores and Stephen Lanzuna, Lanusa for um, for the State of California School Boards Association Delegate Assembly representative, and it was seconded by board member Cruz Gonzalez. Any additional discussion? And we will go ahead and vote. And the motion passes for yes to one no. <laughs> Moving on to item 9.3, approval, uh, ratification of resolution 21-22-23, certification of signature. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the ratification of signatures, certification of signatures. Second. Moved by board member Cruz Gonzalez, seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? And we will vote. And the motion passes five to zero, which brings us to 10.0 and specifically 10.1, which is the approval of the consent calendar and 10.1 uh, en encapsulates all the others. So 10.1, all matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the Board of Education to be routine and will be enacted in one motion. There will be no discussion of these items unless requested by the board by a board member. If a board member requests discussion, that item will be removed from the consent calendar and considered separately. Is there a motion? I make a motion um, for the consent calendar 10.1 through 10.8. Second. Any discussion? Well, there will be none as a consent calendar. Then we'll move to a vote. And the motion passes five to zero, which brings us to 12.0 curriculum and instruction and specifically 12.1 approval of mem memorandum of understanding between the Azusa Unified School District and the San Gabriel Valley Regional Occupational Program. Is there a motion on the floor? Make a motion to approve 12.1. Second. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena, second by board member Arianes. Any discussion? And we'll move to a vote. And the motion passes five to zero. Moving on to item 12.2, approval of the agreement between Azusa Unified School District and Atkinson, Anderson, Loyola, Rude, and Romero, A-A-L-R-R. -R. Is there a motion to approve? A motion at all. Make a motion to approve 12.2. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena. I second. Oh. Seconded by board member Bo. Is there any discussion? Mr. Tega, I have a question regarding uh, the need for this contract. In the board notes, you indicated that Azusa Unified was disproportionate in its identification of uh, students uh, on the autism spectrum. Is that a disproportionately higher or lower in identifying those students? Thank you. I'd like to uh, call in Aaron Kramer, who can uh, provide some more background on that. Okay, good evening. Um, I think I'm on. Good evening, board members. Thank you for inviting me in. Um, yeah, I absolutely am happy to speak on this. So just um, some short bullet points, and I'm happy to expand. The all school districts are monitored by the state of California in um, 14 areas um, by California Department of Education, including um, graduation rate for students with disabilities, um, least restrictive environment, and also um, identification regarding disability and ethnicity. So there are times when an ethnicity into your question 
may have a higher percentage proportional to the number of students who are enrolled in the district. So the simple answer, is it higher? It's a bit higher in this area for the subgroup that we had to write the plan for. So can you just please specify which, which subgroup that your student group you're speaking about? Absolutely. So in the 2019-2020 school year, Azusa Unified was identified as having a high percentage in the area of Asian, excuse me, so sorry, I was getting off. 2019-2020 was Caucasian autism. The 2020-20, and so then we had to write a plan for that. The subsequent year in 2020-21, we were out of, and we were significantly disproportionate in the area of Asian autism and had to write a second plan for that. In this current year, we have gone into a um, appropriate number. However, once you are identified as significantly disproportionate, you have to stay that way and go out of that number. I believe it is a three to four year process to sustain that number. So Ms. Kramer, I have a question sure. on that. Um, what's the, the process to understand if your identification is accurate, meaning that you may have a disproportionately higher number of students by ethnicity, by area of disability. How, how do we know? I mean, are we saying that we think that there's an issue that we've over-identified or could it be the case that we actually have more students that are accurately identified? Very good question. And so that is a lot of the work and a lot of the training to answer those very specific questions that potentially we are under identifying in another area. And so a lot of the um, work that we do with the SELPA and with our technical assistance um, providers through the state, we work with um, collaborative learning solutions is to explore the root causes potentially of these concerns and to look at not just the groups that are identified, but also the groups that um, are in our district. And so looking at groups that maybe have a higher number in the district and are we appropriately identifying in those areas as well as potentially over identifying in others. Any other questions? Okay, then there is a uh, motion on the floor, and so we will vote. And the motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. And next up, we have item 12.3, approval of the contract between Azusa Unified School District and assessment consultation, consultation and treatment. Make a motion to approve 12.3. Second. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena, second by board member Arianes. Any discussion? Can I please have an explanation on, on this item? We're going to bring back uh, Ms. Kramer. Good evening again. So, this is also um, my agenda item. This particular um, contract is in consultation with a, um, a consultant who we are hoping to work with to support our behavior support programs in our school district, including doing an audit of our current programs um, in how we utilize our student support assistance, our instructional aids, helping our teachers, our administrators, our school um, teams really implement evidence-based practices in the area of behavior, um, especially supporting students with significant disabilities, the classroom environments, the ways that we interact with students who maybe don't respond to what we would consider maybe traditional um, positive behavior interventions as um, outlined under federal guidance under IDEA. And so we really wanna work with someone who can work in tandem with our behavior specialist, um, Victoria Torres, who is new to our district and is doing a really wonderful job. And um, we just would like someone who also has a little um, bit of a different perspective and making sure that we are supporting our programs and our staff, our families and our students. Thank you very much. I have another, a different question. Um, sure. So can we, if so, if this is directly related to, um, it feels like um, primarily special ed support. Correct. Um, so um, why is this being paid out of supplemental concentration funding and which action service is it connected to? 
I'm going to have to um, partner with um, Dana, Dr. Dana Mitchell on that one. Um, I will start by answering that we are doing a um, overview of all of our behavior support. It is targeted towards special education. However, this also would um, partner with student study team processes for all students who may be distributing or demonstrating some behavior concerns. So it is not solely for um, students in special education. However, you're right, there would be um, a, a percentage that would be supported in there. So again, my question is, so which action in, or action in our LCAP is this? Because I mean, in order to spend LCAP, the, these dollars, right? It should be outlined in our in our LCAP. So I would need any clarity on this. Sure, I'll be happy to, um, I'd have to look that up and I'd be happy to get that to you in a variety packet. So, I have it in front of me. So what would be the, so let's say we approve this contract, which I agree we need to do, right? But it turns out that it's not in one of our actions and services. So it really shouldn't be coming out of supplemental concentration dollars. What does that, does that mean that maybe we should not vote on it now? So, so it's clearly where it's coming from or you have the ability on the back end to ensure that we're not we're not misusing our supplemental concentration funds. And, yeah, and I think these. I can. I'm so sorry, Dr. Mitchell. I think I can speak to that. Um, we do fund our current behavior specialist out of our um, LCFF funding, and so I can tie it to that. Um, I don't have it like Dr. Mitchell said. I don't have that in front of me, but I do know that we do support and have supported our um, behavior plan through our LCAP um, historically. So and we can get that to you. When would this this when were, when were you planning on having this start? Like what, when Maybe when I can we're gonna start. I can have her start as soon as um it's approved, but we can delay that if we need to. I have it up in front of me if that's helpful. I just was able to look it up. Um it is under I'm just reading, I'm so sorry. Actions and services, it's under my LCAP section. So maybe I don't have the, the tie to the funding um, part, but it is, we do update it in the LCAP on a regular basis. Okay. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez, is this something that you're, you're requesting that we do indeed uh, delay for, for further Clarification on on the the funding source. I I would prefer it. I mean, it could come on the next agenda. I just want clarity. And Ms. Kramer, you said that there is there is space. Uh, there's margin with this particular item. Yeah, there would be margin. We can do that. That that's fine. Okay. Can we look to bring this? Well, I guess. So would you table it? Or so table or margin, yeah, so table. can I make a motion to? Well, did you? Is there already a motion? Yeah. Do you want to? Do you mind amending your motion to table it? Okay, yeah, I'll amend my motion. My motion and I do have I it. table the item 13.3 to the next meeting to the, to the next week and then the second was that we have the the information before we get we have the information on the funding Ooh. i think i can provide that for you under goal four um we have um So, uh, Board Member Rodriguez Pena, your your motion is are, are you you have changed your motion um, so that so there's a motion, but not now, not a second. Second. And so now that is what's on on the floor uh, to table this until the next meeting. Um, any additional discussion? Then we'll go ahead and vote. Vote to table it. So this is a vote. Yeah, this is thank you. This is a vote to table this. Item to the next meeting, and so it, it may it'll look different from what we're seeing on our screens. So the yeah, the, origi the original motion says it's recommended to a uh, vote to approve. So this is the amended well, not the amended motion. Table yeah. item. The table. And the motion to table this item to the next meeting passes five to zero. Which brings us to 13.1 adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Moved by board member Arianes. Second. Seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. And in, uh, any discussion other than 
uh, we will adjourn tonight in uh, honor of Alexis Romero. Thank you. And we will officially adjourn at 8.58 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.